Okay, today I'm gonna show you guys how I make a rig for catfishing and any type of water. You can kind of change it how you want and kind of figure out what works best for you, but there's a few variations out there. There's, I'm just showing you the Carolina rig. There's a Carolina float rig, which allows you to put, a, a, you know, whatever size bobber you want, depending on the water. It could range from something small like this, if you're, you know, you don't got a lot of weight on, or if you got a lot of weight, or the technically this is a weighted bobber, but you could do something big or bigger. This big or bigger. <clears throat> the reason why you want a leader on this, instead of just using your hook attached to the main line, is that Catfish are strong. Catfish have abrasive teeth. If you've ever caught a catfish, you 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 know well that their teeth are like sandpaper. They'll kind of bite and gnaw on it and twist and turn like an alligator or something. And if they're on a rocky bottom or there's a lot of obstacles or debris or rocks or anything, they'll smash right into that and they'll tug your line and do all that. So if you're only using, let's say, a 10 to 15 pound mono, those that you know mono is pretty sensitive to abrasion so any little cut all of a sudden your line's weakened and there's a higher chance of you breaking off at any given point so that's why you go to a leader ideally you look at how what your pound your poundage on your pole so my pole is rated for 25 to 30 i believe pounds of test test weight and I was ideally looking for, you know, uh, maybe 20, like a 30, 35, 40 range for some a mono leader. And I couldn't find that anywhere around me without special ordering it online. But I normally I use a 15 pound mono line for my reel and it seems to work great for my area. I never really have an issue with anything really. I've never been broken off unless I'm fighting a really big fish and my drag is way too high. But for leaders, I went with the big game, the 50 pound. This is overkill. I'm not I'm not catching anything this big where I'm fishing. The most, I, I think the biggest fish I've caught is nine pounds. But I have, using these, this leader method, I have been able to reel in a few turtles. And, you know, they can't, you know, that's, that's impressive to me because turtles are, are strong fighters. They kind of tear up your line the bite your line whatever but you know these hold up i've even been able to pull decent sized branches and logs out of the water whole bait nets and stuff it's kind of interesting but anyways I'll, enough talking i'll show you how to do it i'll explain this little drawing i did for a friend so this is the main line okay right here is a two ounce sinker or whatever weight you want you could use a slide a slide weight kind of clip that you attach uh, more weight to. If you want to, that's really for if the water level's changing or if you're fishing a river or creek in the, it might, it, it goes from slow to fast moving. But if you have a weight in line, you want to have either a weight stopper or a little bead. I like to use these little hair beads. You know, you find these at little beauty stores and they're pretty cheap, they're inexpensive, and if you have a, a younger daughter or sister or granddaughter, they'll work great. Okay, so you have your main line, and then you have a swivel. If you, Depending on what size of fish you're going for, these swivels can be really any size you want. You could even use one of those clip swivels and make your life a little bit easier. Um, I like to use, for general purposes, this might be overkill, I like to use an Eagle Claw size one or one oh size one i'll say and i could use those but like i said you can do the clips there's never it's not wrong so and then you attach that use a polymer knot which i'll show you here in a second to attach to the swivel and then you'll make a figure eight knot which attaches to your leader material and from there you'll do a snow knot which attaches to for me, I like to use these Gamagatsu or yeah, Gamagatsu octopus for circle hooks, and they they always work great for me. I never have an issue. I think there was one time where I was using some rusty hooks and I was having issues, but that hasn't been for a little bit. I 
I changed those out and I never had an issue. I think what was happening there actually was that there was a turtle he, and he was kind of thrown off my game because I was thinking it was a fish, but in reality it was just a turtle stealing my bait. So I was wondering why I could never get the hook to set. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even have to, hook to set the hook because they're, they're circle hook. So anyways. All right, so ideally for a leader, I know I made it kind of short, but it's not to scale. So this I like to have between you know, 15, 18 inches and maybe two feet, two and a half feet, depending on what you're doing. And if you're gonna add the bobber or not, if you want it to flow up or down in the water column. So for me, I'm about to go on a big fishing excursion this weekend. I'll, I'll start a little bit bigger. And I don't have the best dexterity, I know. As a fisherman, you should be able to tie super great knots, you know, all that. But I personally like to have a little bit more because I need a little bit more space. So. We'll take our foot and a half, two feet, and we'll cut it. Okay, so now we have our line. And from there, we'll take one of our hooks. So I'm going to be using a, just, you know, what I call the standard, if you're fishing any man-made reservoir from the bank, chances are you're not going to catch a, a giant you're going to catch maybe at best eight eight or nine pounds typically on an average day uh, i'd say maybe that's pushing it i say on average probably between four and six pounds so we'll start with that and i've caught nine pound catfish with size five hooks so they, they kind of catch they'll catch more than you think the big hooks are for monsters but they work too it's not a huge deal. Catfish aren't that picky. So anyways, the first knot you want to tie on this is a snow knot or a knotless knot, they'll call it. So you want to put it, let me see if I'll focus. So you see the eye of the hook. You're going to put the string or the, the leader through the eye. And then you want to have All right, sorry about that. My phone randomly died. It's very rude of it. Anyways, as I was saying, so you start with the snow knot, you put the eye, you put the, the leader through the eye. You see that? Through the eye. Okay, and once you have that, you wrap it around. I like to do seven times. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You hold on to that. You find the, the other end and you put it through the eye. Take that and you pull it all the way through until it cinches. And now look at that. You have a pretty little snow knot. All right. Now I'm grabbing the barrel swivel. If I can grab one, I'll still pull it out. Okay. And I'll link whatever I can down in the description in case you want exactly what I want, what I'm using. Um, just, just for convenience. Okay. And it, those links will be Amazon affiliate links, so I do get a small portion of that. But it's what helps me keep making this stuff. Also, if you want, I forgot to mention, on this snell knot, there'll be a little tag in. And catfish don't really care about that, but if you want, oh, it's cheap scissors. You can cut it off as much as you want. So. Okay, so, so for the leader, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna make the, uh, what they call the figure eight knot. So you're gonna take the last tag in, or other end, you're gonna make a little loop. And I give myself a little bit extra leeway because I've like I said, I'm not the most 
dexterous for, and then make sure you get it through the barrel. That's what I'm struggling with. And like I said, I need the extra, so, but it's still about a foot and a half long from top to finish. And now you got this, and the idea of this little barrel, the figure eight knot is that when this is in the water, it can rotate freely. So it'll just spin freely and it'll look more normal in the water. It's not gonna be stiff, it's just gonna be floating around. And I use this everywhere. The reason I like it is that, say you get snagged, or say the catfish gets your bait, but he runs back into a hole and wraps around a whole tree. You can break this off. You can break this leader off, but if you prep this, if you make a whole bunch of these, and you have them tied on top of your bucket, or not tied, but just resting, the hook's resting on your bucket, kind of just like, say my, like this, is resting on the lip of a bucket. When you break off, you can just tie a polymer knot to this top, and now you got a whole new set. It saves you so much time of retying. You just gotta do one little knot. Add your add your weight, add your whatever, and tie on. Get fishing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be sure to post more.